If you get really good at this one skill, you'll 5, 10, or even 100x your views. You want to get good at putting yourself in your viewers' shoes. Because on a fundamental level, the algorithm is designed to follow viewers around and serve them content that will appeal to, engage, and satisfy them. So if you deeply understand your viewers and can act on that understanding, you'll have the algorithm basically eating out of your hand. Now, understanding your viewers is a very simple concept, but it's actually incredibly difficult to do. So I want to invite you on a quest. In this video, we're going to role play the five main stages in a typical viewer's journey on YouTube to help you better understand your viewers and uncover what you need to do at each stage to really blow up your gaming channel. Chapter 1. The viewer logs onto YouTube with a need to fulfill. Viewers can start their YouTube sessions in a variety of different places. Some begin their sessions on the YouTube homepage, others begin their journey by specifically searching for a specific type of video. For the sake of this video, let's imagine that the viewer we're roleplaying starts their journey on the glorious YouTube homepage. The perfect place to knock your ego down a few pegs by learning about some 17 year old who earns your yearly income in one month selling slime. Thanks YouTube. And already, this is one of the first places where putting yourself in your viewer's shoes can be valuable. See, before the viewer even starts their session on YouTube, they have an intention. It can be conscious or unconscious, but either way, they have a need that they hope YouTube will be able to fulfill for them. For example, if the viewer is looking for a funny moments video, the viewer is in need of comedic entertainment. The viewer wants to laugh. If the viewer is searching YouTube for the top tips and tricks to win more battles in Clash of Clans, the viewer is looking to get more wins in Clash of Clans. If the viewer comes to YouTube not looking for a particular video, it means they're bored and they need something to stimulate them. And while this might seem obvious, this is the first thing you need to understand if you want to get more views, because it can be helpful for you as a creator to try and put yourself in your viewer's shoes by anticipating the needs of your ideal viewers the moment before they even come to YouTube. Let me explain. Going back to our examples, if you're creating funny moments videos, you can anticipate that your ideal viewers are probably coming to your video because they want to laugh and be entertained. So your title and thumbnail should position your video in a way that emphasizes how funny and entertaining your video is gonna be. And in your video content itself, you should probably include lots of funny jokes. My brother-in-law was addicted to the hokey pokey. It was a rough couple of years, but he turned himself for <laughs> Now, anticipating the needs of a viewer looking for a video like a funny moments commentary can be really simple. But what if we look at our second example from earlier, our top tips and tricks to win more battles in Clash of Clans video. What are the needs of a viewer who might be interested in a video like this? To learn Clash of Clans battle tips and tricks, right? No, it's not. The viewers wanting to learn battle tips and tricks for Clash of Clans because they want to win more Clash of Clans battles. Or, probably even more likely, they want to stop losing so many Clash of Clans battles. Or if we were to investigate this need even deeper, maybe they're sick of losing battles because they feel like they're just wasting all of their time and armies for nothing. Or to go one step deeper, maybe they're tired of wasting their hard-earned elixir, which is the resource you need to expend in Clash of Clans to train armies, for all you poor souls who've never played Clash of Clans. And now with this simple yet powerful insight into the needs of our viewers, we can build our video around a cornerstone that they are actually going to care about. For example, that could mean changing the battle tips and tricks text in your thumbnail to something that speaks more directly to the need that your viewer actually has. Like, stop losing battles. It might mean changing lines in your script from Hey guys, today I want to share my top 10 favorite battle tips and tricks from Clash of Clans to After implementing the 10 tips and tricks I'm going to reveal in this video, I guarantee you'll never waste your precious elixir on another zero star battle ever again. And maybe if we were to get even more big brain, it means creating a second video all about how to maximize your elixir production and you can promote that video in the cards during your video and in your end screens to maximize session time. But hopefully you're starting to see how powerful Powerful, this extra level of insight into your viewer's psychology can be. But just understanding your viewer's needs isn't enough, because without understanding the second chapter in our wonderful viewer's journey, your viewer will vanish faster than a chocolate bar at a Weight Watchers meeting. <laughs> chapter 2. The viewer looks for a video that will satisfy their needs. So now we've established that every viewer coming to YouTube has some sort of need that they're looking to fulfill, let's resume our viewer's journey along the homepage. Most often our viewers will hit the homepage and scroll and scroll. And anyway, your viewer will scroll down the homepage until they find an appealing video that catches their fancy. And as they're scrolling, they'll encounter a near endless supply of high caliber thumbnails and titles. And this is where I want to pause once more because 
There are two really important things you need to understand about this phase of your viewer's journey if you want to win the click. See, I get my students coming to me all the time with their tiles and thumbnails. And the question is always the same. Is this thumbnail eye-catching enough? Is this thumbnail clickable? And most often, the answer is yes. The thumbnail is very eye-catching. Hello there. When you look at it on a blank background that has no other objects competing for your attention. See, what you need to understand is on the YouTube homepage, an eye-catching tile and thumbnail is not enough because eye-catching is relative. You need to make something that is more eye-catching to your ideal viewers than any of the other videos they could potentially be clicking on. And that's the real key here. It's bloody goddamn hard, but you need to make your tiles and thumbnails stand out. Eye catching alone just doesn't cut it. Because if you can't win the click over your competitors, it doesn't matter how good your video is. However, even if you understand why your viewers are coming to YouTube and you've done the research and created a thumbnail and tile that's eye catching and stands out from the competition, your video will flop worse than an official YouTube rewind if you don't understand the third stage of our viewers journey. Chapter three, the viewer tentatively clicks on a video that they expect will best satisfy their needs. So our viewer is on the YouTube homepage and your video has just caught their eye. Based on the title and thumbnail, it looks like a video that is going to satisfy their needs. And this is the magical point where the viewer clicks on your video. Time to celebrate, right? No, my naive and rhetorical self. You've just won the battle, but not the war. Just because the viewer has clicked on your video doesn't mean that they're ready to watch your entire video. Remember, your viewer has tentatively clicked on your video because based on how the thumbnail and tile portrayed your video, the viewer expects that your video is going to be able to fulfill their needs. But if the beginning of your video doesn't live up to your viewer's expectations, they're gonna leave. And so here's the scoop. Don't think about the beginning of your video as the part that leads into the real content. This isn't like a movie intro. You can't build up to the main event. Why am I talking so much about this? Well, you can see in your audience retention graphs start, they often drop off quite significantly. And it's normal for your audience retention graphs to drop off. You will never be able to retain 100% of your viewers. However, if you're seeing significant drop offs, it means that something right at the beginning of your video, you're not meeting the expectations that your viewers had for that video. You need to be subtly or directly affirming to your viewers right at the beginning that your video really is what the title and thumbnail made it out to be and that it's worth continuing to watch. And when you do that correctly, the viewer will continue watching your video and they'll end up at the next critical phase of the viewer's journey. Chapter four, the viewer settles in to watch the video. Studies have shown that retaining a viewer for the first 30 seconds of your video makes it far more likely that they'll continue watching the remainder of your video. If a viewer stays with the beginning of your video, they've made a tentative psychological commitment to your video. And that means for the remainder of your video, they'll settle in a bit and become less flighty. And this is why most big YouTubers invest an incredible amount of energy and time into their intros or hooks compared to the remainder of their videos. All that being said, that doesn't mean that the body content of your video is not super crucial as well. Because specifically, even though it's less likely to lose viewers during the body section of your video compared to the intro, there are two crucial things you need to understand here. Firstly, just because your viewer is watching your video, doesn't mean they're necessarily going to continue watching your video throughout its entirety. So many creators, for some reason, have the expectation that viewers who land on their videos will just continue watching them. Secondly, if your video is mildly boring in parts, but maybe not boring enough to leave completely, your viewers will just jump around your video. They'll double tap. They'll use the preview window on the play bar to skip to bits that look more interesting. They'll use your chapters to jump between segments if you have them. And while having a viewer that skips around your video is way better than having no viewer at all, it's still not ideal because, for example, at the end of the day, you'll end up with less watch time than you could have if they had watched the entire video in its entirety. And it's a less enjoyable experience for your viewers, which you can be sure is something the algorithm will pick up on. And if you can get this down, you'll be ahead of 95% of gaming YouTubers out there. But there is one more critical step in your viewers journey that you need to take note of if you want the best chance possible of getting more views and subscribers. Chapter five. The viewer detects when your video is over and looks for something else to watch. So we've done a good job of retaining our viewers and they're closing in on the end of our video. But I want to pause once more because if you want to get as many people as possible to not just watch your video, but then to like, to subscribe, to watch another one of your videos, or just to accept whatever your call to action is, you need to understand this one thing. So your viewers have a sixth sense to pick up on when your video is about to end. For example, let's jump to the end of this video Andrew and I made and see if you can pick out the ending. Bring back the private matches. 
So there are 10 things players hate in Battlefront 2. Did you spot that? You probably picked up on the fact that the video was over as soon as Andrew said, So there are 10 things players hate in Battlefront 2. With a note of finality. As soon as you, the viewer picks up that a video is ending, as soon as you say some kind of trigger word, like, anyway, that's me for this video. Oh, thanks for watching, guys. Viewers are like, oh, cool, video's ending. Their next thought is not necessarily what are you saying next in the outro. It's usually, what am I going to do next? What video am I going to watch next? You can take advantage of this little window of opportunity and encourage your viewers to do something useful. For example, I'd recommend trying to promote one of your other videos during your outro based on what you know about your viewers' needs. If you have a good call to action at the end, for example, that encourages them to check out another one of your videos and they watch that video and then they watch another video and then watch another one of your videos, YouTube's going to start showing your videos to them on their home screen. If you can create some sort of feedback loop where every viewer you hook into your content ends up watching not just one, but two two to three of your videos, all of a sudden you're getting three times as many views across the board. But the only way to do that properly is by having a really good understanding of who your viewers are and what your niche is so that you know what videos your viewers will be likely to click on next. And that's why you should watch this video next because in it I reveal my favorite framework for identifying your niche and ideal viewers even if you consider yourself to be a variety gamer. See what I did there? Seriously though, it's a good video. Check it out.